Adam 12. When Adam 12? This is Adam 12. It stars Martin Milner as Officer Pete Malloy, Kent McCord as Officer Jim Reed. One Adam 12, Roger. This black and white patrol car has an overhead valve V8 engine. It develops 325 horsepower at 4,800 RPM. It accelerates from zero to 60 in seven seconds. It has a top speed of 120 miles an hour. The automobile has two shotgun racks, one attached to the bottom portion of the front seat, one in the vehicle trunk. You want me to drive? Now on MeTV Fresno, Xfinity 187. Hi, I'm John Mallison. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me here on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this Thursday morning. A great show ahead. We have the new police chief in Selma right here in our studio today. He's going to talk about crime. He'll talk about the city of Selma. And I want to find out about his policing career. It spans a long time, more than three decades. 436 Me TV Option 11. Don't wade through the message. Back in just a moment. And welcome back to the program here on the showroom floor, live on Comcast Channel 187 and 43.6 uh, on this Thursday. Glad to have you along. And guess what? Governor Jerry Brown is in our city or will be soon at uh, Fresno City College to sign that new bill. And what the bill is, it basically says that undocumented immigrants, basically illegals, can now obtain driver's licenses so they can drive legally. Anyway, do you think that's a good idea and is it safe for our community? We're going to ask our guest about that. We're also going to talk about the governor's plan on prison realignment that took place and went into effect a couple of years ago. We're feeling many of the effects now and also the early releases. It affects many different cities in the state of California, including the city of Selma. I want to put that map up so you know where it is. It's south of Fresno. There you see it on the bottom part of your screen. It's about maybe a 20, 25 minute drive outside of Fresno. And it's a small community, about 25,000 people, but still they do have crime. And the prison realignment program went into effect just a couple of years ago. As you will see from this videotape, you'll see some inmates. And it does one thing. It reduces the prison population roughly 144,000 down to about 110,000 within about a two or three year span. And so the question is, where do those prisoners end up? In your local jails. But unfortunately, the jails are full. In fact, in some cases, overcrowded, including here in Fresno. So now overcrowding has caused low-level offenders to be released. Yes, they're back on the street, and law enforcement believes they are committing crimes at this point. It's called the Early Release Program. Sheriff Margaret Mims has been a guest on this program several times. She's against the realignment, saying that the jail system was meant for a one-year stay, not for someone to go in and spend 10, 15, 18 years. As a result, the Fresno jail population has shot up at least 30 percent. The governor says it's a must thing. We have to do it. Live in our studio right now is Greg Garner. He is the new police chief in the city of Selma. He was just hired in the month of July, so he hasn't been on the job all that long. By the way, Greg Gardner spent better than 33 years on the force, Fresno Police Department, so he is a veteran. He knows law enforcement inside out. He knows crime. He knows the effects of the uh, early releases and the prison realignment. And your phone calls are important. Hey, call in today. Weigh in at 436-MeTV, option 11. Also, weigh in on the governor's signing today. That's an important bill that uh, is uh, going to be signed later today by Governor Jerry Brown. We're back with our guest in the studio, Greg Garner, in just a moment. When you're looking for Whirlpool innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined will help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified Whirlpool appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. 
We're back here on the program on Connect With Me on the showroom floor on Comcast Channel 187 43.6. And we always come prepared today, and I came prepared with my own bodyguard. It's Greg Garner. How are you, Greg? Good I'm to well, see sir. you. Thank you. Hey, thanks for showing up. I really appreciate it. Known you for a long time, and uh, you, you came over from the Fresno Police Department. Haven't been on the job that long. But I want to ask you just right off the bat, since I mentioned the governor signing this new bill, mm -hmm. and I want to get your thoughts on it. Well, I can tell you that it's been common knowledge for some time that um, unlicensed drivers make up a disproportionately large number of those people that are involved in traffic collisions. Um, I think there's just something important about having a driver's license that um, allows folks to focus more on their driving. So I think the bill is going to be helpful if we can uh, if we can get more people that are actually driving in the state licensed so we can keep track of their driving behavior. I think it's going to be a positive. All right, we had a phone call right off the bat. Good morning. You're on with Greg Garner and your question, please. Hello? What do you think about the overcrowding in the jails that we should have uh, no such thing anymore as life imprisonment and we should start the death penalty again? Okay, do you have a question? Or That's just, my question. Just a question. there. Okay, you want his thoughts on that. Okay. All right, yeah. thank you for the call. Appreciate it. <laughs> I think there were a number of issues that he, he spoke about. I'll start with the first one about realignment. Uh, it isn't working, at least the way it's been implemented thus far. Um, the county jail system anywhere in the state isn't designed for what realignment is asking them to do. Um, and I also believe that we can't incarcerate, incarcerate I should say, our, our way out of our crime problem. So there has to be some serious discussions about uh, some other method of reducing the prison jail population. Uh, Greg, you've been in law enforcement so long, and I've asked this question many times to other people. Can a criminal be rehabilitated, in your opinion, from what you've seen in, in law, you know, law enforcement for the better part of three decades? Certainly. Any criminal can be rehabilitated. I've never been of a mind to think that someone is is completely... A lost case. A lost case, as, yeah. as, as Charles Dickens would say, <laughs> surplus population. I don't, yeah. I don't believe that. I believe anybody can be re rehabilitated, but I'm also a realist. There are, are people that have not successfully been rehabilitated after several attempts, but um, I do st still feel that uh, a, a stronger emphasis has to be put on preventing crime and preventing recidivism. Um, at least as much effort as we're putting into housing long-term prisoners. Yeah, and many of these offenders, they're, 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 the repeat offenders, are. it's about 70% the rate in California. Mm -hmm. And according to Governor Jerry Brown, it costs about uh, $50,000 a year per inmate just to keep that inmate going mm -hmm. with health costs and food and what, just to incarcerate. Sure. Well, so it is expensive. It, it is. And crime is a, is a is a habit forming type activity we we're human beings criminals are human beings they go towards what they know what do you, what what do you know. mean by that a habit forming is it just it, is it go you, ahead your mind goes towards what you know what you think about every day what you focus on and if you focus on criminal activity more than likely that's what you're going to be engaged in every day and part of that rehabilitation program is to is designed any rehabilitation program is designed to refocus that criminal mind on something more positive and that's why I say I think it's very important that, that the state, the city, the county, we all do something to um, increase the efforts that we're making right now into rehabilitation and um, anti-recidivism, as, as, at least as much effort as we're putting into trying to figure out a way to build more jails and more prisons. You know, KQED in San Francisco, that's a television station, they did uh, like a mini documentary on the realignment program. They actually interviewed some inmates that are incarcerated at the Fresno County Jail that were transported from various prisons around the state, I guess. So um, I, I want you to hear what some of these inmates had to say, uh, KQED. Some of you guys are here, you would have gone to prison, but you're in jail instead, right? Yeah. And what would you prefer? I would prefer to go to prison. There's no programs here. There's no, there's no school, there's no education, there's no job. I mean, we go to yard. This yard is once a week, every Monday for an hour. That's it. What do what some of you other guys feel like? I'd rather go to prison myself. Stating it. Same. Prison. Anybody, anybody that's done time would rather go to prison. You know, all, all you guys would rather be in prison than the jail here. Yeah. They need to start worrying about, like, the rehabilitation for us. You know what I mean? 
Like, what are they gonna do to help us out? What are they gonna do to help him out in his drug problem? What are they gonna do to help him out in his anger problem? You know, there ain't, no, there ain't no rehabilitation problems. inside here for us, you know? A lot of you guys have drug, drug, a drug lot, issues? A lot of us does. Raise your hand, everybody who got drug problems. Drug I'm problems. trying to get a program right now. You know, right, 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 right now. It's um, better medical. Um, we have more space to, you know, roam around. It's like you can have a life there that you can't really have here. But then again, ha being here is kind of like the worst thing. So it's almost like a blessing in disguise. I won't want to come back here. You know? <laughs> You mean, you mean, you mean it'll, it might deter you? Right, um, to be a repeat offender. So even the inmates appear to not like the current conditions over the jail. They'd rather be in prison. Well, I, I think that piece illustrated some of the things that weren't thought about when realignment was first discussed. Most people think of prison as just some place where you house somebody, but there are so many other things that take place there. As was mentioned by some of those inmates, uh, the re rehabilitation programs, education, uh, medical treatment, those services were not duplicated at the county level. Mm -hmm. The only thing that was heaped upon the county is the responsibility of housing these inmates and without those so sort of services, the odds of that person when they get out repeating their offense have gone up uh, astronomically. It almost, just from hearing the inmates, it almost sounds as if prison is almost like a club med situation. Well, to a certain extent. I, I would imagine that someone could look at it from that perspective, but I, yeah. I think that at least part of what they were saying was an honest assessment of their needs. If they, right. I, I really don't think um, that each and every prisoner that's, that's locked away right now, today chooses to spend the rest of their life in that situation. If given right. an option, at least some of them would go another direction, and those options aren't available to them. At a I jail think maybe setting. what they were saying is they were comparing the conditions. Here's the, the conditions in prison. You know, we had access to medical. We had more space to exercise. We had this. We had that. In the Fresno County Jail, the space is limited I think and wasn't the, meant for that. I think one of the most important things that was mentioned in that piece by one of the inmates was no educational program, no school. A huge majority of the prisoners lack education and lack the ability to seek education and further yeah. their, their ability to become a marketable member of society. In Once prison, they get out, yeah. In, in prison, at least in some prisons, that's available. So they can actually learn skills that will give them options when they get out of prison rather than going back and reverting to criminal activity. Yeah. We're talking with Greg Gardner. He is the new police chief over in Selma. He spent more than three decades as a Fresno uh, City police officer. There's no doubt uh, he was a captain, of course, in the department. And we'll talk to him about his career on the other side of the break. 436 Me TV Option 11, back in just a moment. All right, from the beginning. My name's Friday. I carry a badge. Police officers. You any idea who the other man was? My partner's Bill Gannon. You got just one big question. Yeah. When? Now on Me TV Fresno, Xfinity 187. And we're back here on Connect With Me with Greg Garner. We do have a phone call. Good morning. You're on with the Police Chief of Selma and your question. Hi, I have a real simple question. Um, does the police, police chief think that if inmates clap their words by time, you know, that they think with um, in their head, by time that, the, that we'll see a good behavior change? So, like, if, if the language, so it doesn't, you know, that the language is, is class by time to object. That we have some words in our head that are that are like before you know mankind's design, and then we have mankind's design. Does the police chief think that there'll be a behavior change? Thank you. I'm not exactly sure I understood the question, but um, I she wants to know about a behavior change. Will there be a behavior change uh, once these? Uh, you know, the inmates uh, spend uh, quite a bit of time in prison. That's the way I understood it. Well, I think there's a, a behavioral change when anybody's experience change. If you spend two years in prison, your behavior is going to be different than if you spend two years in a monastery. Your, your, your behavior is a product of your environment, at least to a certain extent. So obviously there's going to be some sort of a behavioral change if they spend time in prison, which really makes that other aspect we were talking about before the break about providing an educational environment to prisoners even more important. Right. And, and, you know, I know you work for Police Chief Jerry Dyer. He was your boss uh, for, for so many years. Um, and I know you highly respect him. And he strongly believes in, in, 
in, in, in attacking the problem before it happens. You know what I mean by that? In, I, in I terms do. Of, of, of getting to the criminal before he commits the crime. I, I, I absolutely agree with that. And I, I think it's getting to a person before they become a criminal. Right. So those efforts have to start at a very young age and have to be consistent through the... How young would you say? <laughs> Teenager? Well, or? Elementary school. I, I think, um, and it's not just um, a, a function of government. That has to happen at the parental level, at the educational level. So they have to be given alternatives to criminal behavior at a very young age. Another call. Good morning. You're on with the chief of police in Selma. Your question, please. Hello? You're Hello? on. Caller. Uh, uh, Hello? Caller, you're on. Quick, what's the question? <laughs> Can you hear me? Uh, the question I was going to ask is uh, about the, how are we supposed to get jobs and there's so many illegals that are out there working. How are you supposed to get jobs when there are illegals out there working? Is that was the question? Well, so many, yeah, so many illegals. You mean when working. someone comes out of prison, how is somebody supposed to get a job? Is that it? Yeah, yeah, with, with so okay. many illegals out there working. I don't know. That's a good question. If you spend 10, 15 years in prison, will anyone want to hire you when you come out? Well, I, I think uh, it gets back to what we were talking about earlier. The person that comes out of prison has to be marketable. And I think what he's talking about is competing with someone who may not be a documented uh, worker in the in the in the country uh, that's that's a serious problem yeah. how do we make someone and it what it really takes is employers who are willing to give someone a second chance and yeah. and, and identifying those employers and working with their employers make providing perhaps some incentive for employers to hire people that are in need of a second chance you I think, think all everybody deserves a second chance certainly everybody okay. deserves a second yeah. chance let's talk about Greg Garner why'd you take the job in Selma you know I'm a I grew up in a small town. I grew up in Madeira, a little bit north of Fresno, and I've always liked small towns. I'm a small town kind of guy. And I really like the challenge of being able to uh, work with a community that, that, that's close-knit. And since I've been there, I've discovered that um, what my expectations were were actually met. There's a, a great group of people that work there and live there, and they're all really going in the same direction and want to to, ha to help their city reach its potential, and I like being a part of that. Why law enforcement? You've been in it all your life. Uh, what was it about law enforcement that attracted you, and how did it come about that you stayed so long? Well, you know, I, I probably made the decision when I was a young man, probably in my early teens, that I wanted to get into a profession that allowed me to be outdoors and be active and also to help people on a regular basis. I had, I had given firefighting a, a, um, a consideration, but I realized at a young age that <laughs> I was deathly afraid of fire, so that was out. So I decided to get into law enforcement and was hired as a police cadet when I was 19 years old and have been at it ever since. What year did you start on the force in Fresno? Oh, you're going to make me tell my age now. <laughs> so I started in 1979. My goodness, as 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 a uh, patrolman on as the street, a, as a cadet, Police as a cadet. cadet. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what does a cadet do? Well, at the time, just about everything we had, uh, the Fresno Police Department had cadets working in the field, and you were usually involved in parking and traffic enforcement. There were also cadets working in investigations and uh, other parts of the department communications. My first job was in dispatch as a cadet. So. We did have a phone call, but uh, it's gone away. I will get back to it in just a moment. But I want to ask you, during your 33 years plus in law enforcement, let's say 34, might as well just say for the sake of argument, what has been your greatest satisfaction on the job? Well, honestly, when, when I get a chance to work in the community and see people, in, especially in parts of the city, that are distressed and in need of assistance, when I see those folks wanting to join in with our efforts and, and actually getting to the point where they become self-sustaining and, and um, able to change their own lot in life, that's been the most satisfying thing for me, to be able to help the community reach its potential. All right, another question on the other side of this phone call. Good morning, you're on with the Chief of Police in Selma. Greg Garner, your question, quickly. Yeah, my question is, your predecessor, Chief Whiteside, big shoes to fill. Are you finding the, the job easier or more difficult after having a standing for I think it was more than 20 years, one of the longest serving mm -hmm. small town sheriffs in California, if I'm not mistaken, a historical first uh, president for uh, California care comment. Okay, thank you. Certainly. Uh, well, actually, Tom Whiteside, who was the chief in Selma for 
22 years, uh, left in 2009. Um, chief Myron Dick was uh, the chief of the department for three years and did an, another outstanding job. And he actually that still- was an interim position. He was an interim posi yeah. position. And he actually, he still serves with the Selma Police Department and is an invaluable member of my staff. But you're, you're right, Tom's shoes are certainly <laughs> large and I'm gonna do my best to try to fill them. Yeah, well you got uh, 20 years to go, plus, <laughs> to matching. I don't All know right. that I'll get there. <laughs> Another call, good morning, you're on with Greg Garner. Your question quickly. Yeah, I was just con calling in about the license for illegal immigration. I think it's one of the best things we could do. One, it rewards people for being a member of the community. And on top of that, unfortunately, he didn't quite understand. But when people have an identity in this community, they're rewarded by giving a license. They're not going to screw up. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how we're going to make a productive community. Plus, it holds people accountable. How are you going to hold somebody accountable without a license if they do hit you? That's true. Yeah, good point. You well said. I couldn't. Yeah. No, I couldn't agree with him more. Um, it, it does, as I said earlier. Licensed drivers seem to have a tendency to be better drivers, and uh, and yeah. from a law enforcement enforcement perspective, we want to make sure that collisions go down. So and if you do get into a collision, you don't have a license. Mm -hmm. You tend to run from the police. It at happens. That point, certainly. Too. You know, so one more question before we go to break. I asked you your greatest satisfaction, your greatest disappointment, or in your mind, uh, perhaps a low point in your career. Everybody has ups and downs, but sure. what, what's your greatest uh, or your, your low point? Well, your I, I, over the last several years when I was still with the Fresno Police Department, we saw resources dwindling on a daily basis. Yeah. And some really outstanding programs that we had put into place had to take a back burner. In some cases, we had to eliminate altogether. And most of those programs were designed um, uh, in community service areas. And I, I really was disappointed to see that happen. It made your job harder. It, it did, and it wasn't uh, something we really couldn't control, but that was really a low point for us. You know what I thought you were gonna say? A low point for you in your career? I thought you were gonna say the Wesson murders. I well, really if, thought that was going to be it. If I, if I started talking about individual crimes, we'd need more than 30 minutes. There were a number of yeah, those. So. Yeah. All right, Greg Garner is our guest. We're going to get into talking about the Selma Police Department and all the rest. 436-ME-TV, option 11. Back with Greg Garner in just a moment. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Samsung big screen we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Time for that upgrade to an HD 3D web-enabled Samsung TV. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Back here with Greg Garner, of course, the Selma Police Chief. And before we get into the Selma uh, crime stats a little bit, I, uh, you just mentioned something in the break which I thought of. The Sandra Kirby case has never been solved. She is still missing. Her body's never been found. The case is open. H how do you, what's this case, what's it categorized as? Well, it's, it's probably a cold case now. I don't know if there's anyone still work, actively working on the case. I would assume there might be. You were working on that case? I was in charge of our homicide unit in, in 1999 when that, Man. when that occurred. And it was extremely frustrating for us, certainly frustrating for her family that we weren't able to, to uh, solve that case, although we did have um, what we thought was a, a pretty good suspect. Yeah. Um, who, would, who was that? Can but, you say? Or? Well, I, I would prefer not to now, okay. but since right. I'm no longer working with the President Police Department. But okay. it was frustrating because yeah. it was a tremendous loss to their family, and we would have liked to have gotten some closure on that case. All right. On to the Selma crime stats. Now, you know, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that the city of Selma did not have a police chief, a permanent police chief, for the better part of, what, three, four years until they hired our friend here, Greg Garner, uh, in July. And so he took over and now is in charge of, well, take a look at these stats. Now, keep in mind, Greg Garner was not with the Selma Police Department when all this took place. Got these from the FBI crime stats, the latest ones that I was able to get off the Internet uh, from the FBI, 2010, 2011. There you see in some cases, uh, they, you know, crime went up twofold, threefold. But look at the homicide rate zero in those two years, but per capita, it seemed that Selma, from what I read, had the highest crime rates in the Valley. Is that true? You know, it may have been the case, certainly yeah. back in 2010, 2011. I, I'm happy to tell you that 2012 was a much better year, and we continue to see successes so far 
this year. It's interesting. It's all about perspective. When I look at those numbers, uh, that was a those, that would have been a good two weeks worth of statistics in my former job with the Fresno right. Police Department. So, and no homicides this year yet uh, in in Selma, right? We don't have any homicides there. By the grace of God, no. So okay, far. knock on wood. Exactly. Just knock on wood. <laughs> I know this is hardwood right here. <laughs> anyway, and the only bad thing that happened last year in 2012, you had that double homicide and suicide. Uh, I believe it was. Uh, a family situation, it a was. domestic thing. It absolutely was. But those are rare in Selma. Thank goodness uh, they are. Uh, in fact, violent crime as a whole is rare in our city, and I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that continues. Now, Fresno Police, how many officers on the on the force there? You, you, what, about seven, 800, 900? Well, at the high point, there was about 850 officers. Now I think they're hovering somewhere around 700. Okay, still a lot of officers, mm -hmm. uh, but that covers a lot of area. In Selma, you're overseeing how many officers? About 45? Well, we've got about 45 employees altogether, but that takes into account everyone from myself on down to our volunteers. How many so actually on the street? We have about um, 30 un uniformed and non-uniformed sworn officers that, um, that uh, take care of the entire city. Right. Now, I don't expect you to comment, obviously, on any kind of personnel matters, but there were some embarrassing situations before you got there with some of the Selma police officers. Um, three or four of them got into trouble with the law. How do you rectify that as a chief when you walk into a situation like that? Well, um, from my perspective, it was a while before I got there. The department, yeah. I, in my opinion, the department had recovered fully from that the, those episodes. But I think in, in every department, you have to set a standard of, of conduct that uh, you spend most of your time making sure people adhere to. And I, I was pleased when I arrived at Selma that I, I really got the sense that they had gotten past that and were moving in a positive direction even before I, I arrived. Do you have the cooperation, too, of the city council? Yes, they're, they're very engaged. In fact, one of the things about that entire community that I was really pleased to discover when I got there is the community as a whole is engaged in civic activity and they want to see the city reach its potential. So yes, they're very engaged. What do you expect from your officers. If I were to join the force, you would look at me and say, John, here's what I expect from you. Aside from being sworn in, mm -hmm. what do you expect? Well, I expect them to be professionals in every aspect of their job. Um, and I expect them to treat the people that they deal with with dignity in, in a manner that allows anybody, even criminals, to, to keep their dignity and, um, and to set an example while they're out uh, representing our city. Is it, is it a difficult job? Certainly, it is. It's most the, the, difficult aspect about your job is what? Uh, about law enforcement specifically, as a or chief. As a chief, I was trying to trying to get a, a number of things accomplished with with um, less than an optimum amount of resources. And your budget is far less, obviously, than Fresno. It uh, is, which is what, roughly well, it's, speaking. It's getting better. It's just a couple million dollars right now, and um, uh, I'm. I'm in a good position in the sense that the economy is starting to turn around. I think the city uh, had some very rough years that they had to make it through, and they made it through, and they kept their head above water, and I think we're going to see a turnaround in terms of resources. Yeah, I want, so, our, I want our audience to know that um, when he was with the Fresno Police Department, he worked his way up to captain, and he was in charge of a district in South Fresno that covered a large area, about 200,000 people, and now here in charge of a city that's roughly about 25,000, but still, you know, smaller doesn't always mean less problems, too. No, it's it's busy, but it's a different kind of busy. One of the things that I like about it is that we really have the opportunity to provide better customer service, if you will. Um, with 250,000 people to service, uh, you, you think 700 police officers, or in, in my case, I had about 300 working for me, um, would be sufficient. It really isn't. Um, so, um, in a small town, we can provide better community service. One final thing, back to the crime stats, just just briefly. We know that you know homicides are not much of a problem. Knock on wood. What's your biggest crime problem, in your opinion? Well, when I first arrived, it would appear that the biggest crime problem we had was was theft, um, auto theft, burglaries, and things like that. But those are are actually going in the right direction. So um, I'm hoping that that trend continues. I sure hope so. Greg, we consider you a friend here on the show. I hope you come back. 
Thank you can come you. back anytime. Well, I'd love to. You bet. All right. Thank you. And I know you watch the show on a regular I do. basis. Thank you. All right. Our friend Greg Garner from the uh, Selma Police Department. He is the police chief just hired uh, back in July, and we're happy for him, and uh, we wish him well and good luck. Back with a special program tomorrow here on Connect With Me. You won't believe it. Hope you can watch on Meet TV Fresno. Have a great day. After practicing law, Raymond Burr fought crime. You have the right to an attorney. His name is Ironside. Ain't it the truth? Now on Xfinity 187.